everyone, Freddy here here, and welcome to today's video series called Under the Cover, where we'll be looking into RNG based perk rolls and combinations and seeing how they affect the weapon as a whole, from good perk rolls to bad perk rolls, then giving you an overall verdict if you should hunt one down and add it to your collection or shard it. Today's weapon we'll be looking into is the wrong side of the right scout rifle, with its roll of full auto and explosive rounds. It can be only gotten via a world drop from the Forsaken expansion and comes with many other perks of your choosing. Its stats are the following. Impact 67, Range 64, Stability 28, Handling 28, Reload 32, Aim Assist 39, Recall Jackson 70, Magazine 13. The wrong side of the right is a 150 RPM high impact frame with a TDK of 0.18, requiring 3 critical hits to kill or 5 body shots to kill. Landing criticals in the Crucible are worth 70 and bodies are worth 47, which makes it a very excellent weapon to use in the Crucible on long range maps and can play well against most PvE enemies. The role currently shown is an odd one, as the perks on any other weapon would work out fine and practical in most sense, but for the scout we're using it seems to make the weapon slightly more worse than it currently is. Now before I go into detail, let's go over the perks I have. So in the first column we have Devil Scope D2 and King Dot K2, second column Drop Mag and Tactical Mag, third column Full Auto, and fourth column Explosive Rounds. We also have a Reload Master work to make work with. So the thing that makes this roll a odd one is the explosive round and full order combination on a 150 RPM scout rifle, which is a 50-50 in terms of practical usage, as the perks from any other perspective are hurt the weapon as a whole because of its unchanging stats. You see, full auto on scouts only work well on 260 RPMs and 180 RPM scouts because the RPMs are already fast enough to match well with the perk, and in some cases are an ideal perk that many people should be hunting for when going for these RPM specifics. Although yes, you will obviously see some kick between your shots, they are easily more controllable and can allow you to switch between full auto or single file on your end. The 150 RPMs don't really get that same benefit that the other RPMs get because they fire way too slow for the full auto to benefit the weapon as a whole. As high impact scouts tend to have low stability and relatively average recoil kick, adding full auto won't make the weapon fire faster or help with the issues of the weapon's stats which is why it hurts the weapon a lot. Also, the high impact frames are more designed for precision hits to cater for their free shot kills and slow RPM, so you can see with something like full auto causing a lot of shape for the weapon, isn't really the best choice of perks to choose from. In fact, it's more of a perk I would say you should move away from and not actually go for for a 150 RPM scout. The high explosive round perk is also a 50-50 perk for this weapon, as it's great for disrupting players recoil from their end, but it also causes our damage to be lessened and it changes our time to kill from a 3 critical hits to kill to a 4 shots to kill. So if you were to use this perk and weapon on Equinox the map for example, where snipers and scout usage are at a all time high, you'll have a higher ground in terms of taking them on and channeling them, as the explosive rounds against a sniper user or scout user will cause them to flinch a lot and also prevent them from landing headshots which tend to be the main bread and butter for these type of weapons. This also rings true for weapons with average to bad recoil direction and stability as well, such as most SMGs and ARs. So in many ways, getting this of the weapon is a pro for shutting other users down, depending on their weapon type. On the other hand though, this also splits your damage into two categories, with the initial bullet doing slightly more damage, while the explosive do slightly less damage. It's around 48 upon criticals and explosive doing 20 as an after effect, and 20 for landing a shot via a body shot, which combined with the explosives would then make it around 40 to the body. It's still effective nonetheless for using this weapon frame, but you have to be aware of the damage you'll be doing and whether this is a loss in damage is worth going ahead with, or not, as like I said, it's 50-50 to work with. And then the stats for the roll we got isn't the greatest for us to be using. Uh, stability, handling, reload speed and aim assist are all very very poor from the get go, and with the following perks attached to the weapon as well, it makes you wonder if the weapon we have is generally going to have any usage outside on the field. PvE? Possibly. PvP? Considering what the meta is currently, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot if you want to try this weapon out, but like I said, it's still viable on most engagements. Now the stability for the weapon is a core issue as it's meant to smoothen out your shots, but in our case it's actually making it bounce everywhere and makes it even more harder for us to land our shots. 
Thankfully, the weapon type frame has a built-in incendiary that increases stability when stationary and ADSing, so that can act as a temporary fix for the time being. And for the reloading section, we did manage to get both drop mag and tactical mag in one go, so we have two options of reloading speeds provided, so it's not all that bad for us on our end. However, as our recoil direction and stability are both at odds with each other, if we were to go up against someone with high caliber rounds or explosive rounds, we would have a hard time with engaging and generally actually winning that fight, because it's actually going to affect us by a lot. So really, when using this weapon, you really have to keep your distance and know when to engage and not engage. And then it still leaves us with handling and aim assist, with both not needing that much investments considering how we'll be engaging, but it would be nice to improve our aim assist a bit more so our shots are more accurate with the role we got. So, is the role we have worth keeping or sharding? The answer is shard. Simply because the stats and perks don't synchronize well with each other and it hurt the weapon's performance as a whole on the field. Although we have the weapon's centric to pull off the better stability that can pair well with explosive round and full auto perk, it doesn't fix the whole issue of the weapon where it needs more stability to be stable, including when moving as well, as this is where the weapon's incendiary perks tend to stop. Explosive rounds is a great deterrent against those who like to use snipers or any other weapon that has average to low recoil direction, but also affects our damage which in most situations isn't that bad, and for auto, although optional on our end, doesn't provide any sort of enhancement to our shots, as we will still fire slow and one more bullet to kill. By the time we get a kill, someone else would have come in and nabbed it at the last second, which I've noticed a lot of. It's not a terrible weapon, as there's perks that can make it better, and I plan to dive into all the doors you can get, both good and bad, but this one is definitely something you'll want to avoid, unless you like to just test and mess around with these type of weapons in PvE, which I would then say go ahead and keep it, but eventually down the line you're going to shard it. So that comes to the end of the weapon perk review video of this week's content. I have plenty more weapons to show off with unique perk synchronizations that you should try and give a go. But like I said, I will do that for another time. If you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like, a sub, and share the video with others who are interested in this type of stuff. Also, follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Anthem based content if that's your type of thing. Link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.